Hi there. So in Dave's last video, he did an IC7 dash install into an R33 GTR Skyline. It came up absolutely mint. It's got the indicators, the high beam, the handbrake, all of that stuff, and the fuel level input calibrated correctly on the dash. There was lots of questions about this, lots of questions about exactly how to do it to make sure you don't run out of fuel. So today, we're gonna to do a practical demonstration on how to do the fuel calibration on the dash in a car and we'll show you how you will never run out of fuel but have the most accurate readings possible. Now in order to get the most accurate fuel tank calibration, I like to do it in the car with the sender in the tank ready to rock and roll. Yes, you can use Ohm's law to figure out the minimum voltage, the maximum voltage and type that into your dash, but sometimes you don't know where the sender's sitting when it's all the way down the bottom or where it floats all the way to the top in your particular tank. It might be a custom application. So I find the best way to do it is emptying the tank all the way. We measure that voltage. Then we put in our safe amount of fuel. That's our zero level. Let's say 10% of the tank. So this thing's got a 65 litre tank. So we're gonna put about five litres of fuel in it. We're gonna calibrate that as our zero position. Then we're gonna fill it all the way to the top. We're gonna to measure that voltage. That's gonna be our 100%. Then we get the full range of the sender on this car from zero to 100% with a little bit of reserve, just like a factory car. We're gonna use this piece of hose that we have and put the feed line directly into that. And when we've armed the fuel pump, it's gonna empty all the fuel straight into our jerry cans. Instead of physically emptying the fuel out of the fuel tank itself, I'm going to bridge the top and the bottom pins of the relay so that we can get the fuel pump running and pump all the fuel out of the fuel tank and empty it out the front fuel hose. So you've just seen that I've taken the feed fuel line off the fuel rail here and put that straight into the tank and now we're pumping all the fuel out to try and drain the tank completely. Just keep in mind, I am saying the feed line, it's not the return line after the fuel pressure regulator. If we were gonna do that, it would take way longer for all the fuel to come through. So this line is coming directly from the fuel pump. So it's got the fuel pump, the hard line that comes up, comes through the fuel filter. Then this is supposed to go in the rail. Instead, pumping it straight out. Does take a little bit of time, probably takes five or six minutes to fill up this 25 litre can. So make sure that you don't have a flat battery at the end. So I know we're getting to the pointy end now because I heard the note of the pump change in the tank and instead of a constant stream of fuel, it's kind of just spitting fuel now. So it's picking up whatever it can grab and it's throwing it to the front. Now, the car wouldn't be running that well with this amount of fuel in the tank. Um, just keep in mind, normal fuel pumps don't really like to be, to be run dry. So when we get to this point, we'll kind of give it a break. We'll stop about here. We still know there probably is a litre or two in the tank, but that's not a problem. That'll help us with our reserves, something we'll talk about in a second. So what we're physically gonna do now is calibrate the empty point of the actual fuel level sender and tank together. And we're gonna put that into the dash as our zero number. Uh, before Scott said we were gonna put a little bit of fuel in there just to make sure that we've got some sort of reserve to make sure that we can get to where we need to get to and not run the pump completely dry and the tank be empty. So what we were talking about, the empty part, in your tank, this could be empty and it could be resting on the floor. This could be empty. We don't actually know, and that's the danger of calibrating this outside of the car, is that you don't really know where the empty is in your particular car. So what we might do is put five litres in now and we'll set that at the empty point and then we'll fill it up slowly, slowly, slowly till it's all the way up to the top. And then once we can't put any more fuel in it, we'll calibrate that at 100% and then we're pretty much ready to go. And then we'll test it to make sure that when we take some fuel back out of it, we do actually see that measurement happening on the dash. Now, before Davo puts in that 10% or that base fuel so we can get our zero point with our little bit of reserve, as the tuner, I'm gonna record the voltage coming out of the fuel level at true zero, and I'm gonna put it against the file that I carry for this car, just so that I don't have to do this work again if the need ever comes up. So because I'm a really visual person, the easiest way for me to record the true zero position on this dash, just take my camera, 
take a photo of that. That's my true zero before we put Davo's five liters or 10% of sort of safety fuel in there. And that way it's on my phone so I can always go back through the dates and find that voltage nice and easy. So grabbing my jerry can, I very carefully empty about five or so liters into the fuel tank while keeping a watchful eye on the voltage on the dash to make sure that it's moving as I pour in the fuel. If it doesn't start moving, it means that we've got a possible wiring error. So we might need to reassess that and empty the tank and try again. I'm gonna take another photo of the dash now for my records. This one is showing 2.40 volts. And this is after Dave has put out our base of five liters of fuel. So now we fill it to the top and then we've only got one more measurement to take. Now that we've put the five liters of reserve fuel in the tank and set it to empty, we're gonna take all of our fuel that we've got from the car, put all of that back in, and I've got a little bit extra to top the tank off so that we can set it at 100%. So now over to the software component of the task, and it's really not that difficult. So I've got the Haltech ICC software open in front of me. I've got the fuel level voltage that's been displayed. That's the one that's getting displayed on the dash already. Uh, a handy hint here is while you're doing these calibrations, down the bottom here, decimal points. Let's change it to two decimal points. That way you get a little bit more resolution and a little bit more accuracy in your calibration. If we come across to here and we'll go to channels, double click on that. Then up the top there, we'll select which channel we wanna mess around with. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna say AVI four sensor value fuel level. If I click on that and go select, then top right here, input calibration. I'll click on that. All right, this is all of the information that lets the dash convert that voltage into a zero to 100%, an empty to full value. So I'm not gonna worry about too much of the stuff up the top. The most important thing is getting our voltage and our levels set up down the bottom here. So voltage from the photos I took before, remember it said that's the way that I record everything, it makes it easy for me. If I come across on my iPhone here and go, all right, I know that 2.6 volts was absolutely dead empty. The thing stopped on the side of the road. So that was just for my notes. Don't really want to talk about that. 2.41, 2.41 volts was my zero position. That was the one that after Dave put five liters of fuel in it or about 10%. So that means that when you're cruising down the road, when the fuel level says absolute zero, you know you've got five liters still left in the tank. Most factory configurations are like that as well. Imagine you were driving down the road, your fuel light comes on, the thing says empty, and then it just stops. Wouldn't you be shocked? Because everyone knows that you've got another, you know, 20 or 30 Ks after that. So that's what we're building into the calibration there. If I come across to the next one, 100%, again, I'll have a look at here, was 0 0.54, 0.54. That was 100%. I'll apply this, close that window, send to dash. Down the bottom, says it's writing. And it's as simple as that. It's a linear sensor, which means that the fuel level is gonna drop in a linear fashion. We don't need to do a whole bunch of separate points. However, if you really get keen, you certainly could do that. You might wanna, let's just say you've got a 50 litre fuel tank. You might want to calibrate it in litres. So you could do a zero point, then you could put in 10 litres and a calibration, 10 litres and another calibration point. Um, not so common to do it that way, but it is possible in the software. Now that we've successfully filled the tank and calibrated it at full, I wanted to proof concept and make sure that I could empty some of the fuel out and see the volts go down and the percentage of the fuel go down. And there we go. We can see that it's going down ever so slowly as we empty the tank, which is exactly what we want to see. Fantastic. A couple of good things to know. Every sender needs two wires on it. One will be your ground, which is the reference, and the other will be the signal. Let's say, for example, on this one, we've got one signal wire on the top, but no ground. The ground actually comes from the unit itself which would get ground from the tank. If your tank is not grounded on your aftermarket tank because it's rubber isolated maybe, you need to ground your tank. So just a very small wire that goes to ground to the car will make sure that this will work properly. 
Um, look, another one is to make sure that when you're fitting multiple triple pumps into a, a tank hanger in a factory tank or an aftermarket tank, make sure that the sender's got the full sweep. Make sure that as the fuel level comes down, it doesn't get jammed on the side of the tank or in the pump hanger wiring or something like that because no calibration is gonna save you there. If the, calib if the, the sender gets stuck halfway and you keep running out of fuel, you're never gonna know. It's gonna get stuck at 50% and before you know it, it'll be parked up on the side of the road. The only other place I've got stuck before is on a saddle tank. So you've got a tank in one side and you've got a drive shaft and you've got another tank on the other side. Uh, typically in the back seat you would find that of a car. Uh, you actually need to wire both senders on both tanks. So you ground one side, go into the sender just like we did on this one, but then loop it into the other sender and then out of that sender up to your dash. And then it will read both senders and do an average of both of those and send that signal into your dash. But it works exactly the same. And that is everything we know about how to configure a fuel level sender in the IC7 dash. Um, all the hints and tips, how to pump the fuel out to get our zero level, how to get our full level. From now on, there's absolutely no reason to run out of fuel. Pretty much, we're ready to go. As always, thanks very much for watching. I'm Scott. This is Dave. See you next time.